Welcome back, guys. Sorry, I slapped this. <clears throat> that sounded like a gunshot, but that was actually some fun stuff from my howitzers going off. I would have played some revolutionary music, but what I played, I guess, technically was royal free, royalty free, but it was also copyrighted at the same time, so I got some issues with it. So I won't play it this time. I really enjoyed that music, but play it in your mind or at your house right now. <clears throat> so we're back after a few weeks. I'm sorry that I was on hiatus. A few things in life as always happens and couldn't get to a live stream. But as you see on the screen, we're back to our Liberty or Death coin series. I think I'm going to dive deeper into this game too and different parts of it. Um, and, and just go through the aspects and what I've seen when playing and learning this specific game itself. I did pick up a game, another coin game, that you may have saw on uh, one of my sh posts called Fire in the Lake. And it's back there, still in its wrapping, all on package, and counter clip that eventually. Um, which I'm going to start a new series called Connor Clippy News, which I'm just going to get on and just ramble and talk about things while I'm actually counter clipping my games, which, you know, is a tedious process really when it comes down to it, but it becomes kind of automatic. Um, but I have lots of things to clip um, and do that to make them look a little better. I never did that back in the day when I started playing... Um, war games and over the years because you know I played myself mostly because a lot of people didn't like to play games that had over two pages of instructions that I lived with and various people they didn't like to dive into novels I guess I call it or they say of instructions for a game and it takes days to actually first do to pick up a game sometimes of the games I love the complexity the overarching different scenarios and things that can happen during the game. You know, something was, a lot of people I've played with like just pick up a game and play it that day. It takes minimal effort to understand and learn, which there's a lot of good uh, items for that. So give me one minute because things are happening behind me with my other non-humans children. Well, I'll let them be for now. It's close to lunchtime, so they think it's lunchtime before it's lunchtime, and that always happens. But anyways, so let's get back to the topic at hand. So what you see is the board, and I have it zoomed out as much as I can. So we're we're actually at like a good spot. I'm gonna try to make this live stream long because we are just one aspect of the game where I'm gonna end. But it is an important aspect of Liberty or Death. So you see, we've pretty much taken control of a lot of New York area here in our last turn sets that we did. So basically, we're moving on to the winter quarters part of the game. So this can happen multiple times in the game if you're playing in scenarios overall, and there might be one. This is the final one, right? Um, what that does, it basically sets up a series of turns to be comprise and resets you know really a, s a set of turns is like one turn when you get down to it to the winter quarters kind of resolves a whole turn and resets and other game systems right where you play a game then you have a reset rebuild you know reinforce that's kind of what the winter quarters is kind of checks sees who's who's winning who's a, if, if it has one we can end the game if not we do rebuild reinforces all that kind of things that in other games, that's just another phase of the one turn, right? So basically, each turn is really like, it's like a sub-phase of one big turn when you get down to it for a scenario. <clears throat> so, when that happens, we pull this over. There's two types of ways to play the Winter Quarter, depending on who you're playing with and how you want to do it. You know, if you're playing solo solitary, obviously you have to have the argument with yourself. And a lot of us do. Come on, we rationalize with ourselves, but... Um, but just depends. It, usually when to pull it from the deck like we did last time, it automatically comes the active or current card, right? Otherwise, you can play it so it comes here to the upcoming, you know, of card. 
and it doesn't automatically become the current card. So there's a couple ways to play it. I'm playing it with it automatically becoming the active right now. So as you see, it says winter quarters. When this card is turned up, stop and swap with the played card. Conduct winter quarter round immediately. So we're doing. So this is what it is. Um, and we also have an event on here. Let me zoom in a little better on that. If we can fledge, shift the balance. If Patriots or Indians are ahead in their second victory condition, 7-2, which is in the, the rule book, which is nice to give you a reference to it, that faction loses two resources during the reset phase. So, what we have is a nice representation on the board here. We're in the winter quarters, right? So, we got to check if we got victories for any of the of the factions in the game. So I have the rules I believe set up and I have to pop that up in my system. And we'll actually go there. And I'm looking for it right now, sorry. Go back to the winner. I think it's in 2.0. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Do, 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 do. switch over to that so there we are um and that looks like a little too small make that better all right that will work for now I see a winter calming option that's what I was just talking about where you instead of exposing right away you can select it you know to be the upcoming but to make it easier I'm gonna flip through here I just makes it quicker for myself. I just look at all the winter quarter stuff. So here we go. Get her off that. So we already went through that. We've turned up the card. It's gonna be the active card. If any faction has met its victory conditions, all victory conditions are positive for at least one faction, the game ends. Exceptions on player option one player. So if I win. See victory. So we gotta check victory conditions for when we're running the Patriots. So let's check that out. All right, let's check that fun. So if you want. Well, we'll just Google the rule because I always get them on digital because it's easier to present them and read. So if we go look for victory conditions, right? Seven. So it's seven two, if you're not mistaken, which makes it a lot easier to reference things. Check your victory connection. That's connection, connection, victory conditions. Winner call to order to win both faction. Factory conditions must have positive margin. Otherwise, there's no winner, right? 
So we're looking at Patriots right here. Playing Patriots and the French, but opposition exceeds support by more than 10. And Patriot Forts plus 3. So let's check. Opposition exceeds support by more than 10. Opposition made more by 10. Turn off studio mode. And I'll zoom up here. So support. That's definitely true. It's a 21 versus what support way down here. <laughs> so that is true. Opposition really is greater than 10. And Patriot Forts plus 3 is greater than Villages. So here's Forts. There's four Forts are out. Plus 3 is greater than Villages. So there's seven Villages out. Hold on. Is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six. Am I missing one? Seven. So that's not greater. So the Patriots have not won the first condition. But they, they got the first condition, but not the second. The French opposition exceeds four. Yes. And. Cumulative British casualties is greater than rebellion casualties. Uh, let's see, casual one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Casualties are one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Yep, yep. So technically, the French have won. French have run this stuff. Yes, the f looks like the French have won this. So, <clears throat> that's kind of a decisive victory for the French. So, but let's go back through the rules here. <laughs> kind of review of what else is going on. That's too big. Alrighty. So technically they have won already, right? So that's interesting. So let's go to back to Winter Soldier. <laughs> the Winter Court. So it's it's its own section, right? To you I just realize it's it's its own section, so it's a very important part of the game, right? Which makes sense. So that means a French one. But you know, if that happens, the game's over, right? Because the victory's happened. Um, and then they determine winner. Done. So, if not, let's go through the rest of the stuff. What, what would happen if it, the victory conditions were not made? So, we're going to check in the supply phase. Check each faction's unit to see if they're on supply. So, the British. British cubes are on supply if they are in space. In a space with the British fort or city of control. So, Let's check that fun. Right now. So their British control got a fort, so that one's good. Um, 
I see something with my fun. I see something I don't like. I don't know why a vassal does this. So we're going to adjust so you can see it all. Because for some reason it was made too big. Alright, I apologize that if you didn't see see that specifically. So, Alright, Norfolk control. They're in control of the city, so they're good. Philadelphia, they're good. Control. Fort, control, city, good here. Boston's in control with that as well. Looks good to there. Quebec's good. Quebec here is good. So all their units are within supply of the units needed. So there should be no issue with that. So let's check the next condition. So if there was none of those cubes with um, not in a city, right there in a colony, or there was no fort there, they're not in a controlled British city, then they'd have to pay one resource or remove the cubes to available, or shift the space one towards active opposition. If no, it's just possibly it's all the way over in control, uh, active opposition then and they can't pay the resource then they have to remove the, the cubes as well <clears throat> it doesn't apply to the West Indies nothing none of these replied to the West Indies to the French to the British now the Patriots so Patriot militia and Continentals are in supply if they're in a space with a Patriot fort same kind of thing or a colony or see here it's not just a city it's a colony with rumble control kind of same basic concept right as everything else so if we look through for the Patriots we're good here here we're in control and I believe because the rebellion controls are good Norfolk City here right here this is the issue so they're not in control of it you have a unit here. British is in control. So that means I have to either pay one resource, which at this point in time I have five to spare to keep this militia unit here, or I just remove it to available. So basically retreat it. Um, Or remove one for every two pa total Patriot units there. So if I had two units, I could just remove one. Okay. It's a little different than the British. British removes everything. Patriots can remove it if they have numbers. Because it's their... Kind of, that kind of com comes into, like, it's America, right? The states, the colonies. So they have more... They live there, so they have the ability to keep their forces there a little better than the British. So, let's keep looking around. Here we have a fort. Control, we're good there. New Jersey control, we're good there. New York, we're good. Connecticut, we're good. I just realized the Tories here. So the Tories, I would have had, I just they made that mistake. So right here, they would have to remove these or pay for them for the British. Because they're in a control of the Patriots, right? So I made that mistake. So most likely, since they're Tory cubes, we'd probably move them up. Uh, none here, none there. So everywhere else looks pretty good. That the only one for the British would have been an issue, and what's it? You don't matter for them. Oh, this one too. Wait, no, I'm wrong. Anyways, 
I don't know. Yeah, you can see it. I didn't realize if you could see my cursor or not. I keep forgetting about that. The check. The French a little different. I didn't supply if they're with Patriot Fort. So I think the only French units I have are in New York and Connecticut here. So there's a there's no fort here. Or colony or city with rebel control. Rebels control these both, so they're good here. If they weren't in control or, you know, for a Patriot Fort either, they can remove those units to the nearest space with a rebel fort or pay one resource per space if not possible. If not, move them to available. Same kind of deal. So that's the supply. We're not dealing with the West Indies either. Just remember that. None of that. Now, Indians, if there's no no villages on the map, this is a little different. No, no villages here, but they have seven here. We put one on the map and one of the reserves. One of these spaces with uncontrolled, always neutral. I mean, always neutral spaces with uh, the reserve symbol. Any... So, Indian War Parties are in supply because there's only Indian War Party pieces. If there are space with a village, so anything with a village would be good. Like, this one's okay in South Carolina. This is good. It's good. Most of them have villages that do have stuff. So, for this one. You can pay one resource like everybody else if, to keep them alive or move the war parties to the nearest providence with a village so you can just n nearest so no matter if they were like here we move it all the way up here 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 so most likely the Indians would move to because they don't have a lot of resources which is zero most of the time they're very low resource faction they probably move here And then the next thing we do, 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 if it's possible, we can do the West Indies battle, which the French must conduct, right? So we're down there in the West Indies. So they conduct a free battle if French and British pieces are present per battle procedure on 3 6. And then the French, French, then British may return any remaining units. To available or pay one resource if they remain so basically the same deal overall if you can't do anything with the normal setup pay one resource to do it all right after that you know i say like this is kind of the end of the whole major turn so you do reset check for victories you know replenish refresh whatever reset the next thing we do which I'll show on the screen, next page. Res the resources phase. So the resources phase adds resources to each faction as follows to a maximum 50. On our board, if you remember around the edge, it's got up to 50 um, places to track things. So the British resources, they earn British forts plus population. To the British population is very important. British force plus population of non-blockaded controlled cities plus five if the British control the West Indies. Which is not going to happen very much, but it's something you can see. It's five, excuse me, five free resources if you can. So, let us look. On our wonderful, so how many forts we have? It's easy to look at. We have one fort out. So therefore we get one resource plus the population of controlled non-blockaded cities. So we got one in Boston. New York is blockaded, so we cannot uh, take care of that. That's a two that we're lost, lose out on, lost out on. <laughs> lose and lost. One for Philadelphia, but we don't take it because it's blockaded. One for Norfolk, so we got one, two, plus the four, three so far. I believe Savannah and that's it. So three, one, two, three. So it's four resources right now that we've gotten based on population of controlled non-blockaded cities. And then 
Quebec City isn't also another one, so that's five. We can't blockade Quebec, I believe. What happened? Why did you do that? All right. I guess we can't blockade Quebec. It just is in the weird position, so. Five, f five resources. Something I learned to get out. And then you see French control and the Patriots, the Patriot side faction, whatever, whole side controls for the West Indies. So there's no battle. <coughs> there's also no plus five. So they get five resources. So now if we look at the Indians, they had resources half the number of villages on the map. And if you remember, we had seven. I always round down, right? They put that there. Yep. So the Indians will get three. So their major thing for resource generation is the villages. So the villages need to be need to pump your villages out for the for the Indian faction. Population cities and getting on blockades are important in forts for the British, but they can only produce about three off their forts. They don't have the ability to produce a lot for that way. Population is the most important thing for them. And if they can take the West Indies, right? So, those are the British side dual factions. And then the Patriots add resources to the number of Patriot forts, which they can have more forts than the British, plus half the number of rebellion-controlled spaces. See, these are also cities and the colonies land itself the non-city part the rural part of, of the colonies so half the number rounded down so let's look excuse me I am really yawning today anyways New York won well, let's look at the fort. So they have four automatically off the bat. They can produce up to six. So they have a more better ability to keep forts and produce based on the forts. Um, one, two. I'll count just the, the control of each area. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have six controlled territories. Half is three, so they get seven resources. Seven. Indians got three, and British got five. So what do the French get? Before, we're not before, we're after t the, the TOA. Add resources FNI level, which is our blockade FNI. So we have two right now. So we get two resources, plus the population cities not British controlled, plus five if rebellion controls what city to do. So that's automatically seven there because they control it. How many cities not British controlled? So one, one right now. So we get eight. French usually get the most resources, I've, if I remember or not, just because of the West Indies. Because they so fluctuate between two and three most of the time, I think. So, you're always going to get seven or eight off the bat, depending on how the, the Patriots are doing with attacking cities and whatnot. So, we got eight for them, seven for the Patriots, three for the Indians, as I said, there was the low resource faction, and five for the British. So that's the resources. Now, well now we go into the support phase. So where we can spend stuff and mess stuff up. So do some items and stuff. So if this is your final, you know, part, winter quarters round, you know you're the last one, then the game won here after all this stuff. After all this, um, 
The British may res spend resources to build support in British controlled spaces with both one or more British regulars and one or more. So they got have Tory and British forces there. Every one resource spends, removes one raid, one propaganda marker. Those are done by the Patriots to stymie them. And then once no raid tokens are there, then you can shift to one towards support. It's basically, you can adjust two levels per space this way. So if we wanted to, if there was any, there was really, everything's mostly active there on their way. Here, we can spend, there's no raids or propagandas. Spend two resources we want that we just built, so we'd have eight right now on that five, right? So we'd be eight, eight. Patriots, what did I say, seven? French are eight, so they're 12. Patriots were the same, but they were one less. And the Indians are here. So let's say that happened with the winter quarter. So we got some resources to play with that if you want to do that support, you can move this to active support twice. So you can actually move that up higher for yourself, which is advantageous. You can also do it here. So you have passive support here. You can bring that up one, and then you can bring up this up too. So that they can spend that five resources to adjust that because there's no propaganda or anything done by the Patriots. Okay, well, committees of correspondence. The Patriots may spend resources to encourage opposition. Same kind of deal. Actually, you know what? When we go back, I forgot about the Tories. So Philadelphia, Norfolk, we couldn't do it because there's no Tories. So there's no British regulars here and there's no Tories here. So we couldn't do anything. So ignore what I said. But if we had Tories there, those could have been done. The Patriots may spend resources to encourage opposition and rebellion controlled spaces with Patriot pieces. Every one resource spent removes one raid marker. Once there's no raid space, shift it to level towards. So it's basically the same idea as the British can do, but it's with just the Patriot pieces. So militia of and the regular continental regulars. Now here, game end. If this is the final quarter run, then a game ends. If not, continue with re redeployment phase. So, we already had victory. <laughs> Come on. So, let's move on. PDF. There you go. Whoop. Boom. That was funny. All right. Redeployment page. Basically, we can do a leader change based on um, Gazalt, the event, the event card on deck. So if we look at that, right? Oh, stop it. So let me zoom down to that location. So, come back here. We can make that bigger. Maybe not. So, you see the French is first here, right? So what that means is that we could do a leader change if available, right? Um, no change before Treaty of Alliance, which we have already passed that. You know, if laws are no further changes. Rochambeau, we change. I think we already had changed him. Yeah, we have Rochambeau in New York. So therefore, we don't change. We replace with Lazoon, sorry. So that, we'd replace that leader <laughs> with a new leader. So he goes, I'm going home back to France, France, France. And then we bring out Lavo. I'm coming and goodbye. 
I'll see you later. And there he comes back. He's like, hi, Washington, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Why did you get here so late? Ah, uh, I had to get some croissants and butter. And I didn't, I was all out of croissants, so I had to wait. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> all right. Um... <clears throat> So we replaced it. Depending on who was on that last um, event card, we changed, right? So we did that. So we go through. We can redeploy them. So we can move all our leaders along to different pieces. So it's some time advantageous to move to a better position with your leaders. We can do that. And the British release date. So British pieces from the unavailable box available based on release date in, in the scenario that we're playing. And if there's fewer units in there, obviously you don't move. You can only move what you can move over, and that's it. And then we also lower the FNI one level, we remove one blockade. So every turn or every time we go to the winter quarters, we lose some of our ships. Have to go back and get resupplied and stuff like that. So we lose the blockade and the levels. So we, if you remember, what that is. We go down here to our tracker. It goes down one level, right? We're now we're down to two. That means we have less resources. We don't move it up next turn, and then we can remove a blockade, or we have to. So we take this French blockade of Philadelphia because it only blocks one population, obviously, and that's less of hit for us. This is a better hit on. The British. So we remove the blockade. And then we check desertion phase. Because every time in war, any time, even during peacetime, me being the military, knowing about it, we have soldiers that don't want to do anything because they want to go back to home and mama because they're afraid. Or just other things that can happen that they consider that even more present than being in war. You know, there could be other things that happen, then they're going to leave. So we have Patriot des uh, Desertion. Remove one of five militia and one of five continentals from Matt Ronnie Dunn. Indians first. Militia and continentals to desert. So they choose, right? And then Patriots, you know, your enemies get to choose first. And the French get to choose the British Tories. The British regulars do not desert. As you see, they're a professional army, so they don't desert. They're, they get a little bit um, better of non-desertion availability. So if you're playing British, and your forces don't dwindle because of desertion, but everybody else's does, along with the Indians. Because they have no idea. They're just fighting for their own land, right? They're not in a regular army. They're fighting for the land, so they're not going to leave and def you know go away. There's no. Anyways, I think that kind of is great, and then it kind of balances the game a little bit. And then we do the reset, so we remove all the ra all the markers that we had on for propaganda raids. Move all the faction eligible, or mark them all eligible because we're resetting everything. And then move all cubes from casualty box to available, so we get some extra stuff back up there, and flip them to underground. And then we go redo through the deck again. So that was going back through, right? And that's the wins. So. That's the entire... That's kind of like the whole series that we went through of a, a major turn of liberty or death. Which is a fun game. I, I mean, this is a really good, fun game to play. It's it's really it's there's a lot to the rules, but it's not overly complicated to the fact that once you get into the game and understand the mechanics behind most of the things, it's pretty easy to play, it's set up, play, and still have a wide variety of outcomes and choices and what you're going to do or not do based on certain things. It's very one of it's a favorite game of mine. That I thought at first was like over overwhelming. Like, what is this? All these different things, markers, whatnot. I mean, it's, there's a lot of games out there. It's probably too complex. 
I've seen a lot of war games that seem very, very, very complex. But a lot of times, they look like complex before you dive into what they're actually representing on each of the co you know, tokens and whatnot. And once you get into it and understand, it's really simple, like this game is. Like I said, I want to do some series on just understanding each, truly dive into each phase and understanding, you know, of the game itself, right, and understand how it all works for the coin. But this is my one of my favorite periods of history and looking through stuff. So, if you have any questions, guys, just leave a comment. You know, subscribe if you want to. If you're not, you don't have to subscribe. It's nice that you do, but. <clears throat> I'm just looking to create content and just have fun learning about these different things for board games for my own enjoyment and just providing content maybe it'll help somebody or understand or provide some interaction and and maybe play some games with each other anyway so you guys have a great Saturday um, like I said I kept this one short it's only been over an hour under an hour but it's a great step into coin the coin series from GMT um, and like I said I want to go back through and actually just dive into the rule book and the scenarios uh, to understand a little more how to play each one and what what I can come up with questions for myself and try to get them answered and I'd love to understand the interactions of all the different parts and pieces of the game so you guys have a good day keep gaming and understand I don't know why I said that I'll put out some more videos later for, I still owe you guys Red Storm Wising, the advanced rules, um, and various other things, but I'm just going to keep putting out content, probably randomly, but, you know, it is what it is, and I just enjoy doing it. Uh, talk to you guys later. Have a great day.